Well, welcome back to all of our live stream viewers, whether you're watching us on uh, Facebook, on YouTube or on the Stock Journal website. Here on site at the 244th Royal Adelaide Show, the sun is shining, it's a beautiful day, but the breeze picked up just a moment ago, so I went and popped on my uh, nice grey woolen jumper and that got me thinking, where does wool come from? So. I've brought along my good friend here, Colin Loeffler, who for 40 years has been a wool classer, and he's going to show you where the wool comes from that turns into our jumpers, our blankets, our even shoes, you say, these days. And in fact, we've just found out there's wool in coffins. Over to you, Colin. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the old ram shed for our final demonstration for day seven, the Royal Adelaide Show. The sun's out and the crowds have come out as well. So welcome to the old ram shed. My name is Colin and I'm here representing TAFE SA, not only talking about the shearing and wool handling demonstration, but if anybody's got any queries whatsoever about agriculture, shearing, wool classing and wool handling, don't be frightened, come and have a chat to us after the demonstration. This good looking fellow behind me is Josh Sneath. Josh is our TAFE SA's chief shearing instructor, and he's come up from Narracourt this week to, to shear these sheep. So he's ready to go, and that looks like that sheep's pretty much ready to go as well raced out on the board there a moment ago. So a bit about the display itself before we sort of get underway. It's built to replicate what an early style shearing shed would have looked like. When I say early, I'm talking about the late 18th century. For many of our forefathers, as they moved out through the regions of South Australia, they took up um, land holdings, developed their fleece, fleece sheep flocks, I should be saying, built um, buildings on their property, built shearing sheds. And this one's largely constructed of native pine, which was plentiful at the time. So all the sheep yards, all the rails along the front, all the posts supporting the roof trusses are all of native pine. This shed obviously has got a corrugated iron roof on it. Early sheds would have had perhaps a spinifex roof on them, even a brush roof. When they all fell to bits, replaced with corrugated iron. Now this is a two stand shearing shed here. So two shearers heavy working side by side and Josh's mates knocked off for the day and let him shear this last one. So this is what we call overhead shaft driven gear. So what we've got a shaft along the top and you've got a pulley that's been driven by a belt by the motor. A lot of this now has been replaced right across um, sheds in, South, in, in Australia I should be saying. And they've been replaced with what we call single electric plants. They just run a lot smoother and they're a lot safer as well. So what's driving our um, shaft today is a Blackstone kerosene fuel motor built by Clutterbrook Brothers at Gawler. And this machine is 103 years old this year, built in, back in 1916. So originally came out of a shed, a uh, property called Bindara, which had a six-stand shed on it. So that's a bit about the display, and it's been looked after by members of the Adelaide Hills Motor Restorers Club for the duration of the show. So if anybody's mechanically inclined, like not, bit, not to know a bit more about how it works, please talk to members of the show. That's a bit about the display. So what I'd like to do now is just go through a bit about wool preparation down here. So one of the first things we teach our wool handling students when they come along to our schools is how to actually skirt a fleece. So when we talk about skirting, I need to come there, Lindsay. When I talk about skirting, not putting a dress on it at all, but just using my hands and my fingers just to move along the front of the fleece. And, go that way. and just remove the inferior edge portions off the side of the fleece. I'll just draw that wool from here a little bit, like so. And there's our fleece skirted, ready for classing. Just a little bit along this edge here, I'll just remove. There's my fleece rolled up. And what we've got there is around about six kilograms of wool, worth about 10 or 11 dollars a kilo, so about 60 dollars worth of wool. So what I've taken off the edge of the fleece is what we call sweat points. So where the sweat points appear on the, on the sheep is just underneath the front leg and the hind leg in the heel. And the reason why we've got to skirt each fleece and remove the sweat points, they're not worth as much money to the wool grower as opposed to that nice white bright wool leg. $10 a kilo, probably about 6 or $7 a kilo. So if they're left on the fleece, when it comes up in the marketplace, the buyers actually put a monetary discount on it. So the whole purpose of classing and wool preparation is to make as much money as we can for the wool grower. <coughs> they're called pieces, and they'll go over the back of the wool shed into what we call a pieces bin. 
and they'll be bailed up and sold accordingly. So a couple of things that the classer looks for to make some sort of classing decision, if you like. They look at the, the length of the wool. So what I've taken out of that fleece there is what we call combing length wool. And it's, um, it's also formed up from what we call a, a staple. So it's, it's naturally how the fibres all comb clump together into that formation. Now I've got about three staples on my fingers there. Like I said, it's a combing, <coughs> it's a combing length wool. It's over 50 millimetres long. And combing length wool is going out and is making up and our better type of apparel garments, such as men's suitings, women's dress goods, wool trousers, fine knitting yarns. This polo top I'm wearing is pure wool, 19 and a half microns, made from this stuff here. Um, a really wonderful garment to wear. There's little bits and pieces underneath the table. I'm picking up. In shearing shed speak, these are what we call locks or second cuts. And they're carding length walls. They're less than 50 mils long. They won't hold together as you can appreciate. So your carding length walls are made up in your socks and rugs and blankets, the bulkier knitting yarns and those type of things. Still quite valuable, but not as much as your pieces and all your fleece lines. Another thing that the class needs to look at is what we call the tensile strength of the wool. <clears throat> so during process, especially in the spinning stage, I'm trying to spin that out, I'm not particularly adapted at this. But you can see it sort of happening. There's a certain amount of tension put on the fibre. So what the class needs to do is to test each fleece for what we call tensile strength. So I grasp either end of that staple, my thumb and forefinger, stretch it, and just with my index finger, I flick my finger across it like that. And that's quite a sound wool, that's the terminology you use. Okay. And <clears throat> that should stand up to spinning and processing without any fibre breakage. So I'm more than happy to put this fleece now into my main fleece line. Three AM in the industry. Three AM is uh, mainline. M is merino. So the classer takes it up and puts that up into the wool press. Like so. And this is a manually operated press. There's very few of these old Kurt presses used in the industry now, but they make, did make a wonderful bale in their time, about 150 or 60 kilos. Modern presses are designed are hydraulically operated to make a bale of around about 190 to 195 kilograms in weight. And in today's money, that's worth around about $2,000 $2,200. And to put that in some sort of context for you, the 35 um, woolly merino sheep come up from Keith yesterday morning, and they'll cut a little over $2,000 worth of wool for the farmer by um, Sunday afternoon when we finish the last one at 4 o'clock. So that's a bit about wool and fleece preparation. So Josh, if you'd like to go under the pen and bring this you out. <coughs> So these have come up from Keith, and we do thank the lot, Hayden Lyons and his family for bringing these up for these demonstrations. So Josh has brought her out onto the board and set her up next to what we call a, a down tube, and on the end of the down tube is what we call a hand piece. And the first part of the fleece he's going to shear is what we call the belly. So Josh is a right-handed shearer, but if you look carefully, his left hand is doing most of the work. All the, the right hand is doing is holding the hand piece and guiding that through the wool. She looks very relaxed. The sheep, yes, yeah, she is very relaxed. So she's not, he's not sitting her up on her tail, he's just got her on the hindquarters. Yeah. Even though she was a bit flighty there before and run out, she's very relaxed now. So the belly's off now, so the wool handler just comes in and gets it out of the shearer's road. So the next part of the, the sheep he's shearing is what we call the first hind leg. So he's constantly using that stretch, his left hand to stretch that skin. But he doesn't want to cut the sheep at all, and he also um, wants to minimise the amount of second cuts. Just watch carefully also, he's moving his feet at all times to keep that sheep nice and relaxed. Shearing what we call the top knot now, just down the side of the face. Steps up on the sheep now, and this is the most difficult part of the sheep to learn. It's what we call the blind blow, and it's a blow from just underneath the brisket breaks out underneath the chin and it's all done by feel and more often than not this is the last part of the sheep we uh, teach the learners in our schools 
by the time they got here they got some handpiece control so Josh has just broken that wool out now he can see what he's doing picks up that first front leg and starts to shuffle back now with his right foot and sets her up for what we call the long blow now generally this is where we start the learners in the shed because the sheep's just supporting her own weight there <clears throat> there's no weight on Josh's back or the learners back they've got a nice flat surface to work to they can get some handpiece control and they um, can start to feel that skin underneath the comb. About six or seven blows here on the long blow. The last one is right from the tail, right to the back of the head. Steps up now with his right foot. And notice how he's got his left leg, he's got those two front legs tucked in the, behind his leg. And she'll just support her own weight there. She's, there's no weight whatsoever in Josh's back. Constantly shuffling back with his feet. Let's that leg out so he can shear out onto the leg, around the shoulder, out onto the leg. Now picks the leg up and shears down the leg. There's a bit of a hollow there underneath the hock, so he just twists that. He's got a flat space. Now coming down to what we call the whipping side, fastest part of the sheep to shear. So Saturday we've got the state championships here at the Royal Adelaide Show for some of South Australia's best shearers to be competing to see who goes on to the Nationals later on in the year. Always shuffling back, keeping her nice and comfortable, keeping that skin tight with his left hand. And this last blow is what catches up with what we call that undermine blow. So well, well shown, Josh. A round, of, a round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. Well shown indeed. We'll go back to the paddock now and grow that for next year. So what I'd like to demonstrate now is how we show our wool handy students how we pick up and throw a fleece. So what Colin's going to do first is square the fleece up a bit. So you see he's grabbed the centre now. He's collected from the base. And we're going to let him throw this place. There's quite a bit of technique involved. So you see him roll his wrists after he does the big throw out. He says a bit like throwing a blanket up onto a bed. And how about that?